chapter 19, this is the story after Jehoshaphat had gone and make affinity with Ahab. Now we know that Ahab was a wicked king, and through that process, God ultimately judged him and destroyed him. Um, I want to look at what happened afterwards. This was a nation that was broken and hurting, that needed to be restored. And I want to show you the steps of what had happened, and I think this is relevant to the time today. Today is our Independence Day in the United States of America, and I thank God for the freedom that we have. I thank God for the country and the nation that he's given us. And listen, God bless America as long as America is blessing God. And I love America and I love Florida and I love Jacksonville. But when Jacksonville turns their heart on God, there's a problem. When America turns her heart against the God that gave her freedom, there's going to be a problem. And that's what I want to draw out of this story today. If you look at the last verse here in verse number 11, and behold, Amariah, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord, and Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matter. Also the Levites shall be officers before you. Look at this. Look at this. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. Deal courageously. Listen, be strong and do it. Be courageous before the Lord. Have some, be a man about doing what's right. Listen, if you're a lady, be a woman about standing up and being a woman of God and do what is right in the eyes of the Lord and He will be with the good. Let me open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love You, Lord, and we love the freedom and the liberty You've given to us as a nation. And Lord, we see that light beginning to be dim. We see darkness overtaking our nation, and Lord God, we don't want it to be so. Lord, I pray that you would help us as your people to stand and be a remnant and preserve holiness in this nation. We ask that you would give us a time, a space of grace, that we can preach the gospel and convert souls for your glory. Lord, I ask that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit this morning and those that hear as well. Lord, I pray that you would get all the honor and the glory and the praise from your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, God has been so good to us. God has been so merciful to us. God has given us a place where we can come together and honor Him through reading His Word and teaching these concepts to our children. But i got to tell you, without Jesus, without Jesus, any nation is going to fail. When you don't have Jesus as King, there is no true freedom. There is no real liberty. Liberty in Christ is freedom from sin. Liberty is not just do I can do whatever I want and, and we can do drugs and we can be drunk and we can party all the time and America has become a nation that has turned her back on God and God will judge that. But listen, it's time for God's people to turn that around and stand up and, and preach the truth and change some lives. But it starts with yourself as the individual. I believe the only reason that America has been blessed is because we honored God. Our forefathers sought for a, a place where we can have church without the persecution of a state-run church. I mean, we have the First Amendment freedom of speech, and we have freedom uh, of, uh, of, of religion and gathering together and preaching Jesus Christ, and we have the Second Amendment to defend that. But you know what? We had freedom and liberty long before that. It's the Bible we stand upon. And hey, thank God for the Constitution, and thank God for the amendments and all those things. But it's the Bible that we stand on. And when governors and presidents say, shut your church down and go home. It's not necessary. They're not necessary. They're fighting against God. And it's time for Christians to stand up and fight for the truth. It's our job to stand up and preach the gospel and tell your neighbor to repent, tell this city to repent, and turn to God, and He may very well spare us. No nation can be blessed without God. God gave us freedom for the gospel's sake. For the gospel's sake, and that's it. We've done many wonderful works in God's name as a nation, and it's a hollow, empty shell of Christianity. Many, many say, well, of course I'm a Christian. I vote Republican. It's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. God judges the heart, not your voting status. Now, our, our country has turned against everything that made it free. I mean, there, there are bills and legislation in the works, and it's not just this year. It's been many years coming where they're trying to take away the things that made America great. You know, they've turned, enemy number one is, you know, a Christian white male. Have you guys noticed this in the, the corporate news media outlets? It's like Christian white male, enemy number one. That's the problem. That's why, and listen, you know, I can, I can forgive the racism against white people. Racism is a sin. All nations are of one blood. God made everybody. We shouldn't be a respecter of persons and judge by the appearance. We should judge by the heart, right? I can forgive them for their racism against me. 
I can overlook the flawed feminist perspective that's trying to destroy uh, what men have built for years and that feminist error. Sexism is a sin to prefer one over another, whether it's the man pushing down a woman or a woman trying to say, take their rights away because they're a white male. Both are a sin. Both are evil in God's eyes. I can overlook that. But when they make Christianity, generally speaking, when they make Christians enemy number one, and that's who's in their sights, we've got a problem. When you make God's people enemy number one, God and His Word and His people, when, when a country and a nation and politicians and, and the media, when they set their, their uh, scopes on God's people, they've got a problem. Judgment will come by the hand of the Lord. God will pour out wrath upon them. I want you to see this in 2 Chronicles. Look at verse, go back to verse number 1. We're going to look at how King Jehoshaphat, how he turned around a wicked nation. Look at verse number 1. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hananiah, the seer, went to meet him and said unto King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. You know, he had done everything else right up to the point of making an affinity with Ahab. He had established his kingdom in the Word. He taught people. He set up judges and priests, and he preferred the Word of God. And then this man made a mistake. Listen, all men make mistakes. And uh, I, I do want to, in fact, go back a couple chapters. Go back two chapters to verse number 17. I want you to, chapter 17, 2 Chronicles 17. Because, you know, today we have this problem where they help the ungodly. They love the ungodly. And God hates that. And God will pour wrath on those. And we've got churches that are coddling these corrupt politicians and they're, they're loving the wickedness of the world and they're turning a blind eye and saying, well, you know, we should love everybody and we should help everybody. And listen, God has balance in His love and His judgment and we should as well. If you want God's blessing in an area of your life, you better make sure it's according to His word and not your feelings. If you want God's blessing in your life, you should not make friendship with the world. You should not have fellowship with darkness. Look, we walk in a wicked world, I get that. But when you start walking with the world and not just in the world, you've got a problem. We are called to walk with wise men and not with fools. And many Christians and churches are going along with this. And Well, that politician, he, he's got a, a red badge on. That means he's our guy. He's going to protect the Christians and he's the one that will end abortion. We've been fooled by the politics. It was politics that began to destroy this nation and God's wrath came upon it. You're in 2 Chronicles 17, look at verse number 1. By the way, Asa was his father. He sought the physicians and then we come into here where he takes over and Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. Think about this. The man of God, that was, he's established as the king over Judah and he strengthened himself against his brothers in Israel because they were in sin. Right? Separation. Independence. Look, thank God that as America we're separate from England. Thank God for that. Amen? Mm -hmm. That nation ha has done a lot of things wrong and egregious in God's eyes. And I thank God for the freedom and the liberty that, that was established here so that we could be different and be separate. God has churches separate. We don't, we don't hang out with Pentecostals that aren't saved. We don't hang out with Methodists that teach a work salvation. God wants independent churches separate for a reason. Same thing with nations. And look at the way of Britain, if you will. Godless, gun-free. A, a Muslim is a Muslim is the mayor of the city now. I mean, how bizarre. How bizarre. I mean, London has gone so far, God's wrath will come upon it soon, one day. And so here we see the first thing he does, he strengthens himself against the neighboring nation that was not living for God. They were serving Balaam. He hated those wicked acts, and he made a change. He began to change things in his nation and establish godly principles. Look at verse 2. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim in which Asa his father had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and saw it not unto Balaam. Why was God with him? Because he wasn't walking with the world. His priorities weren't watching TV, hanging out with the politicians, being, being with some political party. or you know, no, His goal was to walk with God and seek after God, and God blessed that. God was with him. Look at verse 4. But sought to the Lord 
of God of his father and walked in his commandment and not after the doings of Israel. Again, separate from Israel. You know, Christians, you know what your purpose is? To seek after God's commandment in your life, right? Uh, but the path of the just is a shining light which shineth more and more unto the perfect day. How do I become a perfect, complete Christian? Well, you shine more and more. You get in the Word more and more. You preach more and more. You learn of God more and more. You sing to Him more and more. Use the talents that God has given you more and more until the perfect day. This is God's purpose. This is His purpose for your life. This was, I believe, His purpose for our country, the liberty He's given us. It's not over yet. There is time. We can turn this country around. I am an optimist. God still has people in every city. Does he not? Amen? Yeah. Amen? Doesn't God still have people in every city? Doesn't God still have people that have not bowed their knee to Baal in every city in America? When are we going to sit around? We're going to just stop sitting around and let's stand up, stand in the congregation, bless God, and go out and preach the word. Look at number five. Actually, yeah, look at verse number five. He says, Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presence. And he had riches and honor in abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. His heart was... Look, it's evil when your heart gets lifted up in yourself. His heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. He was encouraged in himself in the ways of the Lord. The closer he got to the Lord, the more he walked in his commandments and statutes, the stronger he got as a Christian. Look, and his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. He took away, he tore down these pagan temples in the Sodomites' house and the, the houses of Baal. He was cleaning up the city for God's glory. You know, in Proverbs 16, it says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. The enemies are bringing treasure to him. They're bringing gifts to him. They're bowing down to him. They're going to serve him because they see that the fear of the Lord is on the whole nation. Look at verse 10. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were round about Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Also some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver. And the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,700 rams, 7,700 he goats. Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly, and he built in Judah castles and cities of store. They were building up wealth and abundance and security. They were growing as a nation, verse 13. And he had much business in the cities of Judah. And the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. I feel like this was early Christianity in America. It just flourished. I mean, the, 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 the flame was on fire, the zeal for the Lord, people wanting to uh, promote God's word and share God's word. And, and, you know, even in America, even recently, we've had uh, people just, I mean, churches growing and, and it increases and things. And today, kind of, it's kind of different. Nobody goes to church anymore, nobody honors God anymore. Nobody, I mean, there are people that claim to be Christians and they don't know what the Bible says. This is a broken nation. This is the sign of a nation uh, under the wrath of God. But we can change it. Yes. He said there were men of war, mighty men of valor. <laughs> let's, let's talk about soul winners. Let's talk about men that can preach the gospel. Mighty men in God's eyes. Go back to chapter 19. He goes on and numbers the men. There was over, over one million men prepared to protect the families uh, for Judah, of Judah for God's sake, really. Uh, chapter 18 is where he made affinity with Judah, uh, with Ahab rather, with Israel, and God killed Ahab. I love that story so much. I wanted to go through the whole thing. For the sake of time, uh, read it for yourself. Uh, Micaiah, that, that prophet, what a man of God. Uh, you know, he, he takes a smack on the face just as Jesus did. There's some neat uh, parallels there. But let's go back to chapter 19 and pick up where we left off. Go to verse 3. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land. So he says, listen, God's wrath is going to be on you because you were making a league with a wicked king. But God found some good things in you. You took away the evil. Look, but look what he says, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. Prepared thine heart to seek God. You understand, it takes effort to set yourself apart for the service of God. It takes effort and work and sacrifice to separate yourself from this world so that you can be used of God to preach the gospel. It took effort for us to separate ourselves and drive all the way up to Callahan and meet there and prepare and get ready to go out and preach the gospel. And God blessed it. 
God blessed it because we're not doing it for our glory. We're doing it for God's glory. It, it took you effort to get ready to come to church this morning. You know how many times I had to tie this tie? Oh, man. I had to prepare myself. I had to prepare myself. I had to prepare myself to get ready for church. Sometimes the Christian life, we get up and we stumble and fall. We get up and we want to sit back down and we get up and we're, I'm going to work for God this, I'm going to do it again. And we fall, we fail, we come short. Thank God we serve a long-suffering God and a merciful God. And you say, well, well Pastor Fran, how do you know that God's blessing isn't totally off of America? I'm looking at God's blessing on America right now. You know what the blessing to Jacksonville is? Men and women and saved in churches all around this city that believe the gospel and they want to preach the gospel. That's evidence that God is still being long-suffering with our nation. Look at verse 4. 2 Chronicles 19.4 in Jehoshaphat. Dwell at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people, from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. Listen, this man, the king, went to evangelize the nation. He personally went out. He, he did, well, you guys go tell them what they should do. No, he said, no, I'm going out. The, Lord, the Lord's given me this place and this opportunity. I'm going to evangelize this nation. He went out to the nation and brought them back to the Lord. This is your job. Look, we are kings and priests. Don't make this an application. Well, that's the pastor's job. He'll, he'll go out and minister. No, this is your job. If you're saved, you're a saint. God will make you a king and a priest unto God and our Father, he says. We have something to look forward to then. So what do we do now? Well, we ought to live as royalty. And I don't mean lazy, sit back and do what we want. I mean live as a priest of God, personally going out, compelling people, bringing them back unto the Lord. That's what God will bless. That's how God can change a nation. It's through personal evangelism in our nation we can preserve this nation. Look here, he's trying to restore this fallen nation. He's preaching repentance to a broken and a fallen nation. And listen, you have to remember, this is not our kingdom. This is not our home. We are currently building a spiritual kingdom to come. It's not about how big of a building we can get or how, how, you know, how many people show up. We are building a spiritual kingdom from heart to heart, from soul to soul, by preaching the truth of the gospel. Look what he does. He establishes the law. Look at verse 5. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what you do, for ye judge not after man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. You understand what he's saying? These men that he established as judges, it's like the Holy Spirit fell upon them as they're teaching out of the Bible what God said. Well, my brother did this and I did that. He's, and they're judging through the power of God's Spirit. God was with them. He was present in this. And he says, take heed what you do. You better take this very seriously. Listen, Christian, you have a job. You have a purpose while you're left on this earth, and it is to be a judge, and I'm talking about spiritual matters. You know, listen, we can judge the physical. That's easy. But let's start with the heart. Let's start with the inside. Let's start with the soul. Let's preach the gospel. But take heed how you do it. You better take it very seriously and be cautious to make sure you're doing it accurately and correct and right, and you're, you're preaching what the Bible says. And he says, but the Lord who is with you in the judgment. Listen, God goes with you when you go out to evangelize. When you minister to somebody you happen to run into in public and you just take a minute to stop everything you're doing and tell them how much Jesus loves them or that he died for all of their sins and by trusting in him and putting their confidence in what he has finished, they're saved forever. Take heed how you do it and know that he is right there with you. Look what he says in verse 7, continuing. He said, Wherefore now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. Look, this is the problem in America. We've got uh, lobbyists. We have political action committees. We have a revolving door from politicians that go and work for the companies, and they come back in, and then they go to a different political office, and they work for secret societies, and they work for Hollywood, and they, they work for all these weird companies that are just trying to extract things off the people. Senators getting corporate cozy jobs because they pass some law in favor of the job they go work for? Look, it's like, it's like the wolf is in the hen house and we voted him in because he was a Republican. Churches have been fooled. We've been duped. We picked the wrong people too many times. We vote them in to protect us and they're, they're just taking from us and stealing from us. And we heard it this last year. Boy, if you don't vote for the Trump administration, I mean, Christians, will be, they'll be beheading them next year. Come January, come February, boy, it's, it's, we're done. It's over for us. Boy, didn't they just say a few years earlier, 
If you don't vote for Trump, then uh, abortion's gonna be legal. Abortion was already legal and they didn't do anything about it. This is the Republican line every year. And listen, I am conservative and I am outspoken politically and I believe we should be active and involved at whatever level that is righteous with the Lord where it doesn't put us out of balance and there is no separation of church and state. It's the church's responsibility to be involved in the state and tell the state when they're wrong. We should stand up and say, and thus saith the Lord, or our nation will be cursed. It's our job to preach the truth. And too many times they just get one big banner and say, well, this is the guy, and, and we get under his flag because he's the tip of the spear for the Republicans, therefore all the Christians have to support him. Why don't Christians just support the Word of God? I feel it'll come back to us again. You know, our governor, Ron DeSantis, did a lot of favorable things as we went through a shutdown. Many states are still on lockdown. He did a lot of good things, and yet some of the legislation he's passing now seems very nefarious. But, you know, here in the next few years when they say, hey, Ron DeSantis for president, well, he's going to fix it all. If we don't vote for DeSantis, you're not a Christian. Beware. Be warned. Be careful. Politics is what ruined this nation that we're reading about here. And I want to make sure that we're not voting to try to be free, hoping that some man will give us the liberty that we deserve. Listen, God-given freedom in Christ. Christ has made us free through the power of the gospel, and we set the captives free by preaching the gospel. Well, I'll continue in verse number 8. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat said of the Levites, and of the priests, and of the chief, of the fathers of Israel, for judgment of the Lord, and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall you do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. Now he got his heart right. Then he went out individually and he stirred people up and he said, now you guys are in charge and you get your heart right with God. You make sure that your attitude and your heart is right. Take heed how you do it and you be serious about it. I feel like America's lost her heart for what's right. It's something worth weeping and mourning over. Our country is not the country that I was born into. That's just what, 40 some years ago. A lot has changed. But I believe through the power of God, through the power of the Word of God, and through God's people standing up on the truth, we can still make a difference. I don't think we should just say, well, it's all over now. It'll be any time now. Then they'll be, they'll be getting us, won't it? That's not what God has called us to do. We have nothing to be afraid of. Hey, He's given you the shield of faith. Didn't He say, above all else, take the shield of faith? Yeah, but they're really going to hurt. Now, I've got the shield of faith, and it will stop the fiery darts. The devil wants to get in your mind and say, no, it's over. Oh, it's too late. You be afraid. It's not going to work. No. You tell the devil to be quiet. You pick up your shield of faith. You say, Lord, I'm going to have confidence in you through the good and through the bad, and I trust you. My country has lost her heart. My, my city has lost her way. We're, we're proclaiming, uh, we're, we're glorifying wickedness and saying, let's be proud of the wickedness in the city. Forget about that. Tune that out. Turn it off. Open this. Get it in your heart. Preach it out of your mouth, and God can change this country. Look at verse 10. And what cause soever shall come to you and your brethren that dwell in their cities, between blood and blood, between law and commandment, statutes and judgment, ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against the Lord. And so wrath come upon you, and upon your brethren, this do, and ye shall not trespass. He says, listen, we are the watchmen of the land. It's our job to open up our, 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 our mouth and preach. And I just have to ask you, are you warning the wicked of the land and, and telling them, if you live like that, God will judge you. And it may take a few years, but it will happen. And there's hell to pay if you reject God. Are, are you warning the people? Are you telling the people of the land how serious of a matter this is? Verse 11, he says, and behold, Amariah. The chief priest is over you in all matters of the Lord. And Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matter, also the Levites shall be for officers before you. Look at this. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. He's not just going to bless everything we do. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. That's his promise. If we do the right thing, God will be with us doing the right thing. And God will bless you as you do the right thing in God's eyes. Go to Romans chapter 8. Go to Romans chapter 8. 2 Chronicles 3 says, now the, now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
I want you to understand that you are a Christian. You're saved forever. God has given you total freedom, but it's not freedom to live however you want. Honestly, it's not the freedom to try to accomplish the American dream. No, the American dream has become a nightmare. Right? It's Listen, we look for another place. We look for a continuing city. We look forward to stepping into eternity with God and you know, with all the things going on, everybody, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. When it's your time and it's your last moment and you know that time is almost up, you're going to feel it in your heart. You're going to say, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't know what's next. But listen, we have great confidence in what God has done for us. He has saved our soul by sacrificing his own for our sins. And man, he paid for them all. He only saves one way, and that is forever. Thank God for that. Now, he's been patient with us. He's been long-suffering with our nation. He's kept a remnant, protected. He's provided for us. He's given us everything we need. Boy, we've taken some arrows by the devil because we didn't always have our shield of faith. We're still in this battle, and we still have things to do. We have to uh, 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 set the captives free. Look at Romans 8, verse number 1. There is therefore... Now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Listen, Christian, when you walk as a spiritual man, and you're obeying God's commandments, as Jehoshaphat was commanding them to, then God will be with the good. There's no condemnation in your life. You say, yeah, but I'm going to sin, I'm going to fall, I'm not perfect, I still have things. I know, that's okay. But when your heart is not right with God, your heart is not seeking after God, and you say, well, I'll get to it one day, and I got my vices, and I got, I'd rather do this with my time. You think God's going to bless that? No. No, He won't. Thank you. Verse 2. For the law, this is a law of God, of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. I deserve to die for my sin and go to hell, but the law of God's life through His Holy Spirit has set me free that I am not in bondage to sin anymore. I have the power through the Holy Spirit to submit to His will and do the right thing and uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Christ. We can live for God. We have a chance. We can save our city. America was once free from sin. Now sin reigns over it, doesn't it? Sin takes preference. For the sake of time, go to 1 Peter 2. I'd like to finish this chapter, but he, he continues to uh, compel us to walk after the Spirit and not the flesh. Quit giving in to your desires and, and change your desire to the heart of the Lord to learn His Word so you can tell someone else. The carnal mind is enmity against God. Too many Christians are uh, enemies of God in the flesh because they're doing their own thing. They're doing what feels good. It's lazy. Thank God that we're justified freely. Justified freely by grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. You're in 1 Peter chapter 2, look at verse 15. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing, in other words, living right, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. You're free. Don't use it to live for yourself. You know, a cloak is to hide something. A cloak, you know, don't hide. Don't disguise your sin. Well, I'm free. I can do it. My freedom covers all that. Listen, that's not His will for your life. Go back to 2 Chronicles. This time go to chapter 20. Bear with me. We're almost done. We're going to stop right here. For so is the will of God that with well-doing, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. As the servants of God, we can change this city, we can change this state, we can change this country. I believe that. I want God to bless America again, and it starts with us, His church, blessing Him first, praising His Word publicly, not being ashamed of being a Christian. Second Chronicles, look at chapter 20. Right after he said, deal courageously and the Lord shall be with you. Look at verse number one. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with the other beside Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Here comes the wrath of God. And there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazarnath Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. Who did he fear? Them or God? Look at this. 
And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. He withheld his necessary food. He sought the Lord and with his whole soul. Verse 4, And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Here comes everybody, all the cities around. Everybody's gathering together to weep and to mourn and to cry out to God. They're afflicting their flesh by starving their body. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand there is not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it us to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And they dwell therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therefore, for thy name saying, If, when evil cometh upon us, he's saying, we, you gave us all those victories, and, and here was the promise, if, when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then wilt thou hear and help. Mark it down. 2021 is a year we need God to hear and help. If we get in the winter here and they say, oh, everybody starts getting the sniffles like they do every winter, they say, oh, it must be, must be COVID-21. Everybody, shut the churches down. Leave the liquor stores open. Shut the churches down. No singing, no preaching. Don't go door to door. You need to wrap some cellophane around your head. You say, no, government, you're wrong. You stand up for what's right. You cry unto the Lord. He will hear. He will help. Verse 10, and now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Look, they're confessing. We are nothing without you. There's this great multitude. They're going to destroy us. They can do it in the flesh, but we trust you in the spirit. Our eyes are on you. Our words are going to you. Will you hear us and help us? My prayer is that God would give us a chance to evangelize Jacksonville and change this city from the inside out. I want to see lives changed. I want to see families brought back together. And through the power of God's word, we can do this. This is the charge he's given us. Look at verse 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord, and with their little ones, their wives and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the house of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, listen, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Listen, America, we are outnumbered. Christians, we are outnumbered. The TV has been successful. The music has been successful. It's turned their hearts away from God. We don't deserve the freedom and the liberty we have, but we're going to fight for it for God's sake. We're going to stand up for the gospel's sake, and we're going to tell people, thus saith the Lord, turn, turn to God, and he will receive you. He says, but the battle is not yours. Notice right away he says, it's not even your battle. But look what he says immediately next. Tomorrow go ye. Well, I thought it wasn't my battle. He says, no, I need you to walk through that open door. Isn't that just like the Great Commission? Go ye. He's given us great power. He has all power. So go ye. And change some lives. Look what he says. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeru. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, listen, he says it again, fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord will be with you. I want you to know when we go out to preach the gospel, God is with us. We're fulfilling his charge. I mean, we live in a wicked world and it's our job to shine that light. 
and we should not be ashamed of it. We should embrace it. And you say, well, I'm not that good. Hey, get better. God can help you. The Holy Spirit can fill you and preach through you if you'll let him, if you'll just submit to him. Verse 18, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korathites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, listen to this. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Listen, our message is simple. Believe in God, believe the word he's given us through the prophets, and you will be established, you will prosper. And that's my message to America. Listen, if we as Christians, God's people, will turn and humble ourselves and preach the Lord Jesus Christ, he can bless this nation. He can protect us from the communism that's coming in and the Marxism and all these other strange things. I mean, we have given over our power to the devil. But it's time for Christians to stand and take it back. And it starts one conversation at a time, from heart to heart, from faith to faith. Will you stand and preach the gospel? Will you fight for the faith? Will you fight for the freedom that God's given us? If you will, God will be with your good. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the freedom and the independence and the liberty you've given us as a nation and as a church and as individual Christians. Lord, I pray that you would help us to take these words that you've given us and put them in our heart. Help us to apply it to our life. Oh God, I pray that you would help us to be better preachers for your sake and your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.